I am excited today because I have been trying to get this woman to meet the biz for years. In fact, <laughs> I have a poster from years ago that we made. And who is almost right in the center? Aww. Gorgeous, amazing woman. Um, and, isn't that a great poster? <laughs> I'm gonna just get right into it because we've got Teal Shear here. Hi, Hello. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I, I think it's so funny that it took the pandemic like to get this, like it's like we could have done this before, you know? Right, I know, I know. Because it's, I'm not physically in LA anymore. No, so, which is amazing. So, it's like I, we've been trying to like maybe if, if I was going to visit, come and drop in on a class, but it just never works out. And but I've been like putting this off it. for a while. You've been, say that again? I've been putting this off for a while, doing it online. And it's great. I've been watching them and they're great. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. It's family. Yeah. And it's just a way to connect with people right now with, with everything that's going on and just... Yeah. How have you been? I, and so you're where now? Seattle. Oh, Seattle. Oh, <laughs> Nobody knows where I am. I thought it was like... I was in Nashville. You were in Nashville. I were, well, so after LA, it was Nashville. Okay. And then we moved to Seattle three years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes some sense. Yeah. Yeah. I loved Seattle. My brother used to live up in Federal Way. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not any right. yeah. Say that again? No, I said not any Oh, okay. You know, like uh, Inspector Clouseau used to say. So, now you grew up in Tennessee. Yes, from fourth grade on. My dad was in the Navy, so we moved around a lot when I was little, little. But from fourth grade on... Mm -hmm. I lived in Lenore City, Tennessee, a small town um, right outside of Knoxville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And when did you first know that you wanted to be in show business? Well, I had always liked performing, like I was a cheerleader. So I liked that, I liked being in front of people, I liked that attention. And then when I was 14 years old, I was in a car accident and broke my back. And um, I am a paraplegic, I use a wheelchair. And so I had just started my freshman year of high school. I had just made the junior varsity cheerleading team. And then this happened. Right. Um, and then I really didn't start performing or you know acting again until college. And I went to college uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, at Oglethorpe University. Mm. And I thought that I wanted to go into broadcast journalism. And as part of that major, I took a theater class. Right. And just like fell in love and it was game over. And um, so then I double majored also in theater and have been doing acting you know pretty much non-stop from that I and mean, it, it, it not just acting also working behind the scenes uh producing stage right. managing anything that's yeah. and then also during college at the same time i started dancing with a professionally integrated dance company full was radius dance full radius yes so it was like all at once i'm you know i move away from home i'm in atlanta i'm at college I start acting, you know, doing theater, and then I start dancing, and then that kind of became, yeah, my, my world. Wow, this is yeah. great. And when, now, when did you move to L.A., or what brought you to L.A.? Yeah, I moved to L.A. in 2005. After I graduated from college, I got an agent in Atlanta nice. and started auditioning, and I booked... A, an HBO film called Warm Springs. Was that Kenneth Branagh? Branagh? Yes, yes. And so I was hired as one of the local actors. You know, they brought a bunch of the actors in from LA and all over, but they hired locally for some of the parts. So I booked that and that gave me my Screen Actors Guild card. 
And I also met all of these wonderful people on set. Um, and I also was an advisor to Kenneth Branagh because he was playing FDR who has polio and is paralyzed. So we got together and um, we met one day at a pool, indoor pool. So I showed him how, to, how you swim with just the use of your upper body and also how to walk with braces on your legs. So it was like, that was, yeah. And I met some LA, uh, some of the people I met on the film, actors, as well as the producer and the writer of the film, I'm still friends with today. Okay. Yeah. I love it how, you know, you might plan to be an actor, which you, you are, but yeah. you also have branched out into so much. I mean, <laughs> training Kenneth Branagh. And then, excuse me for this. Okay. So, I always have to turn this off beforehand. Oh, it's Performing Arts Studio West checking in. We have a little group on Performing Arts Studio West yeah. that people say, how is everyone? And we're checking. Oh, that's in. nice. Yeah. Good. It's nice to check in, so. Totally. I'll check in after the interview. <laughs> um, but yeah, you really, you, you have done so much. One of the things that I remembered um, when I wanted you years ago is you created your own show, My Gimpy mm -hmm. Life. Yeah. How, how does somebody accomplish that? And how did, how did you accomplish all that you wanted in that show? Oh, wow. So as we all know, being an actor, it's hard. And a lot of the times we feel like we don't have much control. So <laughs> I, uh, it all kind of started when Danny Murphy, um, he was doing that, uh, a play, History of Bowling. And I love that play. I know. And I, I found out he was doing that play. And I just like to be involved in things. I like to connect with people and just get be involved. So I, I said, can I help you produce that play? You need help, right? Producing it. And he was like, oh yeah. So I just started helping him put the pieces together. And while he did the play, I worked box office. I, we helped raise money. We helped, I just, I helped in every way I could with that. And then after that, I started producing more shows with him and, and stop and coffee stocking. Well, um, um, one of my favorite plays, Virginia Woolf, right? Yes. Yes. And I saw and, that one. It was a great production of it. Yeah, so it's just, it's that. I, I find like that I'm my best self or I'm the happiest when I'm creating and when I'm collaborating with other people. And um, so that kind of like, that was my introduction to producing and, and creating something and I loved it. And then my friend Felicia Day created, uh, she created a web series called The Guild which was very popular. And I uh, had a part in that show. And it was, it, was, it was great to see what she accomplished with that show, how she brought all these people together and created a show that um, she was passionate about. And then to see the community that was created around the show when she put it out on, when she put it on YouTube. So that was inspiring to me. And I was like, well, well I, I should do that. I have stories to tell. I have a unique perspective, one that, as we all know, um, you know, is a, is a perspective we don't often see uh, represented. And uh, so, yeah, that's kind of how it all, all started. Mm. And, then, and then you went in and, and you wrote did you, you wrote the show, right? No, 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 I didn't write. I, uh, a, a writer named Gabe Yor, we collaborated together because I, even though I am writing more now, at the time I um, didn't consider myself a writer. <laughs> and um, he had written TV and scripts. And so he kind of knew that format. And so we worked together. Right. And he, um, yeah. Well, what's so good too is is that you knew that you know you wanted to create the show, but you know you knew that you needed to collaborate. You knew that yes. you needed another writer. You needed 
other people around you? Yeah, I needed people who knew more than me in different areas. And because of working on the Guild, I had met a lot of those people. And a lot of those people we brought over um, to work on my Gimby life. That was such a good web series. I loved yeah. it. And, and it had two seasons, right? Yes. Yes. Do you ever want to go back and do a third season? Or are you just like, no, I want to move forward? Yeah, it's a hard thing. It's like, I'd love to do more. I mean, we need, it's like with anything, you need the money. It's a lot of work. Um, and I feel like I did two seasons of it. We'll see. Right. We'll see what, where things go. But I do miss, I do miss it. Right, right. I'm thinking of what hit me in my head now when I first got to LA, one of my side jobs was um, craft service mm -hmm. on Jeff, John Favreau's television show. And uh, he did that for, I think, four years or four seasons, maybe four, four and a half. It was interesting, the last season. But I worked on it for, I think, three and a half, four seasons. And uh, but I always wonder if people like ever go back and go, Oh, that would be fun to go back and do a, I don't know, maybe a special episode or something. Oh, yeah. Like, just do a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, I saw, and this makes sense, what I was saying about uh, Seattle. I mean, it, it in a way, it doesn't make, it doesn't have to make sense because you could live anywhere and go to Canada, but you just did cost of living in Canada. Yes, I did uh, it in Vancouver. I was in Vancouver for seven weeks rehearsing, and then we did the show at the Arts Club in Vancouver. And then after that, uh, two months later, we took that same show up to Edmonton, to the Citadel Theater, which was that, it, yeah, it was fabulous. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was in January, so it was like negative 40 there. Oh my God. Uh, but was that this January? Yes, I was just there. It's so crazy because it seems like a lifetime ago because of what's happening right now. But it was crazy to think I was just up, you know, January and then the beginning of February doing a show. Like, oh like, yeah. Talk about like, boom. I know, I know. And then I was supposed to be doing the Seattle cost of living. Right. We should have been in rehearsals right now, but that, you know. Right. Yeah. That is such a good role. I mean, I would love if it, if it opens up again after the quarantine's over, Hopefully. keep yeah. me updated because I'd love to see you in that. Yeah, it's such a great play and role. Yes, role and yeah, it's, it's fabulous. Now you talk about writing, you write for New Mobility. Yes, I do. I am their media columnist. So that's great. It's fun to write about, you know, the business and whatnot. And then, yeah, I'll write other, other articles for them too. Um, but that's been a lot of fun. Um, it's, it's uh, great because you can do it from home. It's flexible in that way. And then it's another way for, you know, me to be creative and put things out there. What, one thing that I so admire about you is that you, yes, you want to be an actress and you are an actress. Yes, you wanted to be a writer and now you're a writer. And yes, you wanted to have a family and now you have a husband and a son? Yes, River, he's five. I can't believe he's five. It goes so fast. Wow, but you yeah. do it all. I mean, here, well, well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I do do it all, but it is like, it's it's hard. I mean, like people talk a lot about how do you balance it all? It's definitely like, I don't feel like you can really balance it. It's like when I was in Canada doing the show, I was in Canada doing the show. Like I left home and was away. And yes, when I was in Vancouver, my husband and son came to visit a couple of times, but you know, I, that was, that was hard. Um, you know, my family. And then, um, yeah, so you just, you know, when I'm home with my son, I try just to focus on him. Right. 
And then when he's usually at preschool, I try to then focus on writing or if I have an audition or whatever. And, but it's, yeah, it's a lot of, yeah, you just. One of your, um, oh wait, you know, I was looking through your website, which is wonderful. I mean, so photogenic. When I saw that picture of you with Dustin Hoffman. Oh yes, yes. That was great. It, the, for what, the American Voices? Yeah, the Broad Stage uh, in Los Angeles, they had just opened. Mm -hmm. And they, it was their inaugural show called American Voices. And the producer, I think, found me online through my website. They were just looking for a diverse cast. And I guess they decided they needed somebody with a disability and they Googled it and somehow I came up. Mm. And it was so random. I mean, this, and this is, just shows you how crazy this business is. Yeah. I'm just like at, at my apartment and then all of a sudden I get a call from this lady saying, I'm a producer for the show, uh, this play, American Voices, Dustin Hoffman is directing it and he's gonna be in it. He'd like to meet with you. Can you come to his office today? And I'm like, what? Sure. <laughs> so like, wait, Dustin directed it? Yes. Oh, great. So next thing I know, a couple hours later, I'm driving into, I think Brentwood is where, to his office in this high rise. And then I'm waiting in the waiting room and they give me some side, like some things. And then I'm in the office with him. <laughs> oh my God. Reading with him and I'm just, and then it seems like it's going well, I don't know. And then I leave and then I don't hear anything. <laughs> yeah. And then I think a week later, they're like, oh, yes, you got it. Ah. Um, and then it's like, I get there, and there's like Annette Benning is in it, James Cromwell, Rosario Dawson, Richard Schiff. And I'm kind of like, what am I doing here? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> like, well, because but, you, 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 were, you were one of them. You are one. I think it was just because, like, A, they just wanted to move the disability. So this, that's that's how I got, like, that got me in the door, I guess. And then I guess just because I, yeah, was on, they found my website. Like, yeah, but you were good enough to get the role. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, sure. It's just right. often hanging out there. I, I, met, uh, I met him on the set of The Fockers. And, yeah. and I grew up loving him. So whenever I think of his name or think of when I met him. He was so gracious and, and open. Um, I, I remember being on the set and was watching the playback and all of a sudden somebody tapped me on the shoulder, grabbed my hand and said, good shit, man, good shit. Yeah, yeah, I love <laughs> and that. I turn and it's Dustin Hoffman. And I was going, okay, I can go now. <laughs> I, can, I can leave, you know, yeah, the planet. Yeah. But but yeah, I, I love seeing that picture because it, it radiates. Um, and then I saw you worked with Will Wheaton, who I'm- Oh yes, on The Guild. Yeah. That was great. Cause we were, so The Guild is about a group of online gamers yeah. who play World of Warcraft, but then they decide to meet in person. And then, and so we're in season three, we're their nemesis. So we're another guild of yeah. online gamers, but we're the like evil, access of anarchy guild and so that was fun um yeah that was that was fun to do yeah and i was watching your wonderful um demo reel and, and seeing what i think your latest work what on in cis mm -hmm. yeah in cls new orleans new orleans it's I mean, it was, I mean, your character was like, so, I, I love it. It was powerful. It was like, and LeVar Burton directed it, huh? Yes. And Daryl Chill Mitchell, who, you know, who, who, who uh, is a regular on the show. Right. And then Catherine Beatty, who wrote the episode and is a writer on the show. She um, is a wheelchair user. She has CP. Uh, so she, yeah. It was, it was it's kind of surreal being on that set because you have the writer, producer who's in a wheelchair, 
Right. You have Daryl, who's a wheelchair user. Uh, they had hired a lot of the extras uh, uh, were chair users. So it was just like, almost like, wow, like we're all here and this is, right. and this Kurt, is cool. Kurt Yeager yeah. was on that, wasn't he on that episode? Say that again? Kurt Yeager, was he? Oh yes, that? yes, how did I, yes. No, yes, no, yes, no. yes. Yeah, I don't know how I just like, yeah, Kurt Yeager was the, the series uh, lead, like in that episode. Yeah, he was so good. Uh, so that was just surreal to kind of be like, oh wow, like with we're on a network show and disability is present and like, yeah. Wow. Well, I, re I, I really love too that even on your website, you say in your, your main focus is for the inclusion of performers with disabilities and it's your biggest passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what you define passion. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like that's, you, you, it's definitely your passion too. And, and, um, that's what's, uh, yeah. Yeah. So great. I, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so nice to, and even talking and sitting with you here, you are so just, Hey, this is who I am. And oh, okay, I'm going to do this. I could do that. I could do that. And you, you seem to juggle it. You seem to, the acceptance is just, you know, it's like, hi, I'm Teal. You don't yes. do that. You're no. just like, hey, I'm Teal. Well, yeah, but it's hard though, too. I'm not gonna, it's not all just easy and, you know, right. I obviously, yeah, have my, my doubts and like, you know, insecurities and all that kind of stuff too. Um, yeah. But, you know, so they'll somehow put it out, get it out there, or try to. Yeah. If you had to tell the students uh, from Performing Arts Studio West and Meet the Biz and whoever else is watching there, what is one piece of advice you would give them about going for it? About going for it? Yeah, whatever you want to go for. Yeah. Well, I always kind of ask myself, like, if I don't do this or if I don't try for this, am I going to look back one day and regret it? And I use that a lot in my life. And so I think about that. Like, am I going to one day look back on my life and be like, Tio, why didn't you try to, you know, do my Gimpy Life? Or why didn't you try to produce that play? Or why didn't you write that article or whatever? So I, I, I think about that because it's like, what do you have to, to lose? I mean, um, so that's, I guess, one piece of advice. I don't know. There's so much. I, I don't know if, if it's because I've, I've gotten older or it's, if it's just through what we're going through right now, but I keep reflecting back on like, you know, my life or when I first started acting and you kind of, you play, I find myself doing that. Like, I wish I knew what I knew now then. Yeah. Do you do that? It's like. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah, I do. And at the same time, you know, what's so interesting is I'm, 90 something percent, it varies in the 90s, but 95% of the time I'm, I'm very like, okay, I'm at this moment here, I'm happy. Yes. And that's, and you wouldn't be at this moment if you hadn't have gone through like what you've, you know, like the whole thing. Yeah. Um, what are some other things? I think, it's really to just, and we're dealing with this now. I, and I think as a, as a, in the entertainment industry, we, and I talked about this a little bit earlier, earlier, it's easy to feel like you just really don't have control over a lot of things. Yeah. And we're feeling that right now with the pandemic. It's like, so it is just to trying to focus on like, well, what can you control? And whether that's your training or building a community of people. So you have a support group and you have, you know, just your safe haven of, of people that you can turn to, um, whether it's creating, creating something, whether it's like whatever. It's like, so just trying to focus on that and what brings you joy. And to just knowing that like, you know, 
this this career it's like a marathon you know mm -hmm. it's not we're in it it's not just things aren't just gonna happen and then you know it's yeah. and nothing happens when you want it to <laughs> I feel like things like it's so interesting how things that I wanted maybe to happen 15 years ago or 10 years ago that they may come back around in a different way and you're like oh that happened but yeah but not in the way I expected it to or not definitely not on the timeline that I wanted it to happen um yeah thank you Teal you're welcome I I can now say we Yay. know that every one of these on our show including this yeah. woman which is right. Yay. <laughs>